Welcome back to Melville Today. I'm Emily. And I'm Emma. Let's take a look at what's in store for today. We recap the boys' soccer season, check out a record store, and look at new additions to the cafeteria. All that and more. Melville, Melville Today, Today starts now. To start off today, we take a look at Stuco's sponsored blood drive. Yasmina, Anna, and Anissa have the story. We interviewed Mr. Wright to get more information about the blood drive. We do the blood drive, especially at the high school level, um, to get people involved early. So blood is always needed. The Red Cross will tell you that they're constantly needing more blood. Uh, but getting you as a high school student invested in that process means that you will probably continue donating throughout your life. Mrs. Kern and I work as coordinators on the Melville side. So there's a Red Cross coordinator that we work with uh, to set our dates and to get people signed up and everything. Yearly we get 30 to 60 participants in the blood drive. So my sister did it and my mom does it, so I thought it was gonna be fun. And I wanted to find out my blood type, that too. With photographers Anissa and Anna, I'm Yasmina Smige for Melville Today. Next, Elena and Lamia checked out a donut shop in town. We're here at Strange Donuts today. Take a look. Strange Donuts opened up in 2013 and has shops in Maplewood, Kirkwood, and Creve Coeur. They started nonprofit Strange Cares, which focuses on empowering kids throughout their community. Their donut menu changes monthly with new crazy flavors while also serving the delicious basics. Their website is strangedonuts.com, but they also have an Instagram page they update with new flavors and events. They post the new menu for the month and new flavors they have. They post any local events they'll be at and even serve donuts there. We had some people review the donuts. Let's see what they say. Hi, I'm here to review some strange donuts, and it's this donut right here. Now, at first glance, you're probably thinking not a lot to this donut is a cake donut, which I don't typically eat. Um, gooey butter, which I also don't typically eat, but I'm going to tell you right now, I can't even wait any longer. Dense. I don't want to use the word moist because I hate it, but it is. Only time I'm going to use it. Flavorful, a lot of good texture. I have dreams about this donut, you guys. So good. I would absolutely recommend this 10 out of 10. As exciting as I thought it would be with the Rainbow Pony name and all the sprinkles. It sounds like a regular cake donut with fancy icing. So for strange donuts, kind of lame, but still a delicious donut. I'm trying the apple one. Definitely taste the apple. A little maybe cinnamon. You kind of taste burnt too. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Melville Cafeteria has an exciting new addition. Marissa, Layla, and Layla take a look. Today we highlight Panera Coffee Bar. Here's everything you need to know before it opens. You guys, we are so excited to get Panera's finally open. She's going to be our barista back here at uh, Hi. Panera's. This is an experiment. We are hoping it's going to go great. Uh, did some uh, trying with the students and they like it. So we are hopefully more, we're going to add more stuff. We're going to have beverage, we're going to have chips and uh, some breakfast stuff in the morning. Uh, everything is sugar free. Uh, we're going to have hot and cold coffee. We're going to have uh, hot chocolate, cappuccinos. We're going to have six uh, flavors um, the brown sugar, the s'mores, the salted caramel, uh, the vanilla bean. We are so excited to offer these. With photographers Medisa Almerovic and Leila Haibaz, I'm Leila Shehich for Melville Today. Brady and Gavin recap the boys' soccer season. Let's check it out. Melville Media took a recap of the boys' soccer season and asked the head coach and players a couple questions. I don't think we're quite there as far as the win-loss record goes, but um, I think we're continually to build from last year. We've achieved uh, more wins as, as of last year, um, and we're continuing to build because we're such a small you know, uh, young team. So I think as we continue to grow, uh, we'll see improvement year to year. Just, we have a good combination of uh, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, and I just think that that leadership is really helping, uh, helping with the freshmen, uh, that experience that they have, and the freshmen have really bought in 
uh, to a lot of the other players and, and their help, and I think it's kind of helped everybody kind of uh, mold together. Uh, I really wish we could have won districts, but at the same time, like throughout the end of the season, we got a groove and we started winning games and scoring goals. Uh, we just fell a little short, losing in district semifinals. We work best when everyone was calm and collective and not yelling at each other. I'd say we work best together when we're all uh, on the same page, working hard and uh, just keeping possession against other teams. I wish I would have stayed on sides more because uh, stats would have looked a lot better for me. I wish I could have scored more goals and got more assists and contributing more, but I think overall, like, I did well and the team did well. With photographer Brady Sides, this is Gavin Dracker with Melville today. Rosemary and Donia get to know teachers a little bit more. We interviewed a few staff members at Melo about their career paths. We were interested in what fields they would have chosen alternatively to teaching. I would run a dog park. Uh, you could charge memberships if you have a really cool dog park. And so I'd have all the dogs come and play. And I'd play with all the dogs and do all kinds of fun stuff with them. I wanted to be a journalist. I was scared about where the where media was going at the time that I was in school, so I started off um, pre-journalism and then ended up switching to education uh, my sophomore year. Without a doubt, I don't even have to think about this, I would expand my TikTok page and I'd be a social media influencer. I would most absolutely be a waitress. I don't know why. Why? Well, when I was um, in kindergarten, my mother was so disappointed because they'd be like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a waitress, and she thought that was a terrible aspiration in life. Um, I worked in nuclear chemistry in a lab. I analyzed different samples for radioactivity. Um, we did work for the government, different things like that. With photographer Danya Barwari, I'm Rosemary Clark from Melvo Today. Dead Wax Records is a unique STL spot. Austin has the coverage. It looks like records are making a comeback nowadays, so I decided to go to this record shop on Cherokee Street and see what they got to offer. Uh, the store's been here for 10 years on Cherokee Street. Hmm. You might see 50 to 100 people walk through the store on a Saturday or a Sunday. You yeah. might see Oh, possibly a couple hundred people, you know. I asked Scott about what he likes about working at a record store. Uh, it's just a nice, uh, easy atmosphere. Uh, get to listen to records all day, uh, find out about new music yeah. that even if it's, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old that you've never heard of, uh, that uh, always finding new and exciting stuff to, to listen to, different genres that never heard before or never delved into. I also asked Scott about how the store got its name and what Dead Wax is. Well, it's not my store, but I will tell you that uh, basically uh, Dead Wax is the location in a, on a record in the middle of the record before you get to the label. So there's a space in there where uh, there's no grooves, no music, and that's where the runout groove is. It's also called the dead wax. And they put information in there about the pressing, uh, about uh, maybe who did the mastering, what the catalog number of the record is, maybe some sort of funny comment. So welcome to my very first show of my vinyl tour. <laughs> I was able to interview Maggie Baugh, who is currently on her vinyl tour. Yeah, Little Einstein's actually got me into music, being a violinist um, and loving classical music. And then what got me into singing and songwriting was I started getting bullied in middle school and actually used songwriting as a way to cope with what I was going through and to get all the feelings that I didn't know how to say out, um, which actually led me, led me to be a country singer. So now I'm touring the world and singing country music because of it. Gosh, as a fiddle player, 
I would have to say Charlie Daniels is my biggest inspiration. <laughs> yeah, life is pretty good from where I'm standing. Oh my gosh. I think my favorite song is the title track just because it talks about my mental health story and American Foundation of Suicide Prevention actually did and put their logo at the end of the music video. So I would say that Dear Me, the title track is my favorite song. From Melville Today, this is Austin Hafer signing off. Victory Raceway is a cool indoor go-karting track that is taking over Crestwood. Let's check it out. Victory Raceway has been open since 2013, so 10 and a half years now. So our carts go up to 45 miles an hour. Um, they're all electric, so we're, we have HVAC, so we're heated and cooled all throughout the year, so we're open all year round, rain or shine. Um, and like, like I said, the carts go up to 45, and the, um, as far as the ages go, um, we do everything from you know six-year-old birthday parties to bachelor parties to corporate events. Um, so really anybody between six to as old as you can be to get in the go-kart. So our normal demographic or our main demographic is probably your 25 to 35 year old male that has a kind of disposable income um, that's looking for a little bit of adrenaline. With photographer Erna Ahmedovic, I'm Amy Escamilla for Mobile Today. That's all for today, Panthers. For more, follow us on social media at Melville Media or online at melvillemedia.com. Thanks, Thanks for watching! <laughs>